It's one of the most quintessential science fiction movies of the 1980s. Not only did it feature one of cinema's most coolest and unflustered heroes, but its very title was enough to whet the appetite of any science fiction fan. Released in 1981, the film which was set almost entirely at night has since become a cult classic. Yes, we're talking about Escape from New York, and this is Science 5. Escape from New York was written by John Carpenter in the mid-1970s as a reaction to the Watergate scandal which saw the ousting of Richard Nixon as president. As Carpenter noted, Americans themselves had become highly cynical about trusting government authorities, particularly as the Vietnam War had just ended on a sour note for the US, whilst the Cold War continued on unabated. The story itself is set in what was at the time the futuristic year of 1997. In this dystopian society, which is controlled by the United States Police Force, the crime rate is so high that the entirety of Manhattan Island has been converted into a maximum security prison, where inmates are interred for life. Whilst attending a special peace conference, the US President aboard Air Force One crashes into New York City and is captured by a powerful crime lord. With the President's impending appearance at the peace summit being critical to the war effort, a special forces operative is sent into the city to rescue him before it's too late. Despite its basic premise and overall predictability, one of the things that makes the film fascinating viewing is its heavily vandalised New York setting, which when combined with the mood lighting and the long shadows could almost be considered neo-noir. In addition, when you include all the large abandoned buildings, the film is a visual treat for anyone who loves great sets and wonderful production design. Although it's not made entirely clear what the world itself is like in 1997, it's noted that the US has been at war with a coalition of both Soviet Russia and China since 1988. Although it's not covered in the film itself, the film's novelization states that New York City was the first target in the war, with the city being under intense siege for three weeks. During this time, both chemical weapons and firebombs were used, the result of which not only turned everyone insane, but it also contributed to the massive spike in criminal activity. Alas, with the war still raging on, the only solution in dealing with the massive crime wave was to place all the criminals into the now destroyed Manhattan Island. Regarding the prison environment itself, it's noted that different areas of the city are ruled by various gangs who control their respective territories. However, instead of trying to make a pleasant and comfortable life for themselves, the prisoners, all three million of them according to the novelization, who are actually sterilized before entering the prison to avoid procreation, instead choose to live in squalor, with some even preferring to live underground. Furthermore, even when prisoners put on a stage show to lighten the mood of incarceration, death and murder are always nearby. It's for this reason new prisoners are given the option to terminate their lives before entering the prison if they want to avoid the misery ahead of them. With that in mind, there's an interesting hypothesis to consider regarding the film's location. In the middle of the 1970s when the film was conceived, New York City was in the middle of massive urban decay, higher rates of crime, police corruption and of course the fiscal crisis. So it would be easy to assume that if that trend was to continue, that Manhattan Island could in fact become a prison sometime in the future. As it turned out, the exact opposite occurred and now New York City is prospering. Featured in the film is the main protagonist, Snake Plissken played with great success by Kurt Russell, whilst there are actually a couple of antagonists to choose from, including Bob Hulk portrayed by Lee Van Cleef and the Duke played by Isaac Hayes. Somewhat ironically, even though Snake gathers an entourage of people willing to help him in his mission, ultimately he starts and finishes the film as a loner. Under the outstanding direction of John Carpenter and the highly evocative musical score also by John Carpenter, Escape from New York was a great success upon release as audiences realised exactly what it was trying to be, just great B-level entertainment. In addition, if you get to the end of the film and are curious to know what happens to Snake, his storyline continues on in a comic series which commences in the last 45 seconds of the film. So who should see the film? Considering it's set in a prison, it doesn't take much to realise there will be scenes of violence, so it's definitely not ideal for young children. However, older kids should be okay with some parental guidance. Finally, don't be surprised if after watching the film you start walking around with an eye patch saying, Call me Snake. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a treat. Escape from New York is one of those movies that goes really well with a bucket of popcorn. It has everything you need, a great concept, wonderful set design, and one of the coolest looking heroes you'll ever see. And for that reason alone, is well worth watching.